Okay, welcome back. I just want to touch base with you and talk a little bit about time value of money. This is a very long uh, presentation, so we're not going to do everything but I'll point some stuff out to you, what we're doing. Let's take a quick look at, um, here you can see a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and we're talking about future value, present value, rates of return. And we have a section here called amortization. And it's important to understand this concept. If you're buying a house or something like that, you can also use it. <clears throat> but in particular, when we're um, uh, doing loans and um, capital budgeting project, um, we might have a loan that we might have to amortize over some period of time uh, for this project. So you need to understand <clears throat> the amortization table because that will help you to, to figure out what we're paying in principal and what we're paying in interest over uh, the life of the um, loan. And that's why uh, this is important. Now, um, this also, the structure is also, it's long, but it's not difficult. Um, but sometimes it gets a little bit confusing. So here we're talking about uh, value and we're looking at the free cash flow. So we've seen uh, and we understand how to come up with free cash flow. And we discussed a little bit about waiting, waiting average yeah. cost of capital. So now we're looking at this. Let's take a quick look at the first one. So timeline showing cash flows. Typically, when we're talking about cash flow over some period of time, this is what you will see. Uh, cash flow zero, one, and so on. It mark marks the end of a period. So time zero, time one, the end of period one, <clears throat> um, or the beginning of period two, and so on. So generally, that's what you would see. Um, and typically, when you're solving these problems, it would be helpful to take a look at this and see, um, to help you to figure out what the problem is, how to solve the problem. Timeline for a $100 lump sum due at the end of two years. So at the end of two years, we've got year one, year two. Um, we're paying a certain amount of uh, money. Timeline for an ordinary annuity um, of $100 for three years. Now, this thing you would have heard about annuity in the context of life insurance and so on. Basically, it's either we're paying out a certain amount of money uh, on a regular basis until the end of some time, or we're getting that money uh, from an investment until the end of some time um, at some regular interval. In this case, if we're saving and we have uh, the percentage here and we're making you know, regular payments at, year, at the end of uh, three years, we can figure out, given the interest rate, uh, what the total value of the annuity would be. And um, um, <clears throat> uneven cash flows, well, sometimes we don't have annuities and we have uneven cash flows and they will look like this. Typically, this means here, this negative value means that we're investing. So typically, you'll have this in um, a project where we put in some amount of money and we get some money over some period of time, get back some cash, and um, we factor this thing into a formula using either your calculator or Excel, and we'll get the net present value. And that'll tell us whether or not we should take on the project. So this is another use of uh, cash flow. Uh, future value of an initial uh, $100 after three years. So we invested $100 at 10%. We want to know what that value is at the end of three years. Um, so we're doing uh, these kinds of problems. We have compound interest. Uh, that we're working with, and that's why we need these kinds of uh, formula. They're not simple interest. So uh, you can fat, you can look at uh, Excel, or you can um, use your calculator after one year. Okay, it goes through and shows you that you can do this thing manually, 
and see what we get. So after one year, we have this, and then we go through and figure out year two, and then year three. And so we add all of those guys up, and um, or we could just simply do the computation um, using the general formula future value of n, where n is at the end of the period, is equal to present value one plus i. Uh, raised to the power of n, and you can see this how it's computed. So they showed you this, and then they tell you, of course, you can do solve this with the calculator and, of, and uh, the spreadsheet. You can use any one of those. Using the general formula, so he goes through and he does the computation. And um, the financial calculator, well, you don't have to worry about the HP. It's kind of a little bit confusing. So um, this one is a little bit easier. You can see um, but you have to be careful with the calculator because it stores things and you have to reset the value. Now there's something here called BGN mode. And um, when you're doing the annuity, you'll find out later on. And uh, we have an annuity due. That means that we expect the value, we expect to receive the cash at the beginning of a period. We have to do the computation by setting the begin mode in the calculator, and um, that will give us the right answer. So you'll see a little bit later on uh, the, how we use this. Okay, in using these calculators, you gotta make sure going from one computation to the next, all the registers should be really cleared out. If, if you don't do some specific clearing, what happens is you carry over some numbers from one computation to the next, and it causes the result to be um, different or incorrect. Uh, <clears throat> so we go through the financial calculator, and basically this shows you the inputs at the top and the output at the bottom. And so N, the interest per year, uh, the present value. Notice that the input at this time, um, the calculator expects that one number is going to be input, and the rest will be output. The number that you identify as input is, is identified by a negative sign. If you don't do that, typically he'll take the uh, positive number, but the result, of the, uh, the output would be a negative number. Don't get confused with the negative number, it's just how the calculator works. But if you do everything right, it'll come out okay. Um, but if you forget the positive, the negative number as an input, it'll come out as a negative number. Don't be uh, too worried. Okay. Um, using spreadsheets, this is how we do it. You take, you have, and I've sent you guys some stuff, you can look at it, but I'm gonna send you some more. Chapter 28, um, mini case, and you have the future value. You tell Excel, we'll ask you for these input. You go ahead and you enter the uh, uh, interest rate as in this manner 0 0.1030 three, zero, and minus 100, and it will give you the answer. And that's it. So it's, uh, it's very easy to use. What is the present value of $100 due in three years uh, at 10%? And so <clears throat> you've got something like this. You solve for the present value. But um, let's see. Um, here you have the present value N, 10, present value is what you get as an output future value because that's what they give you. So either present value, future value must be negative. And so that's what I was talking about. Um, using the spreadsheet, you can do the same thing. And here it'll add, tell you if it's an ordinary annuity or if it's due. And, and Excel will tell you if it's a zero, it's due, if it's an, uh, sorry, an ordinary, and if it's due, it's one, something like that. So uh, finding the time for the money to double. Okay, this is a very special problem. So 
you can follow this through and see, but um, generally, um, here's the financial calculator, one that becomes two, and um, what do you have to do? And here you see M is equal to, this is the output 3.8, given these parameters. Uh, the book talks a little bit about doubling the money and some of the specific issues around that spreadsheet solution, number of periods or time frame. Uh, finding the interest rate, this one's a little bit more difficult. Um, the trial and error, and it's hard to do this by hand. But here, if you have the calculator and you have n is equal to 3 minus 1 present value, no payment, future value is 2, it'll take you 25.99 years. I'm sorry, that's interest rate. I'm sorry about that. We have the years, not the three years, 25.99. Okay, <clears throat> spreadsheet solution. Uh, okay, so we talked about uh, ordinary annuity and annuity due. That means when the payment actually happens. Here it's the end of the period, and here it's the beginning of the period. So that's the thing you have to know about that. And uh, what's the future value of ordinary annuity at $100, 10%? You can see to just punch these things in. And um, this is ordinary. Uh, so this is a formula you could use, but generally we don't use that. We just use the uh, financial calculator. And you can see from this here, we've got the uh, number of years, we've got the uh, uh, interest rate, present value, the payment, and output would be the future value. Now, um, the spreadsheet will give you the same thing. Now, this is the, what is the present value of this ordinary annuity. Uh, basically, what you do is you find uh, the present value of each payment, and the only variation there would be uh, the time. You get different values, you add them up, and you get the present value of that. Present value of an annuity, this is what the formula looks like if you want to compute it by hand. Uh, financial calculator, you put all of these guys in, note the payment, the future value here is zero. So you hit the button at PV, and you get 248 at 69. Um, now, it says have payments. Uh, but no lump sum future value. So enter zero for future value, and you get the present. The spreadsheet solution is like this. So <clears throat> now if it's annuity due, you notice when the money is at the start of the period. So present value of an annuity due, you're going to punch it in like this, begin mode, you notice. So you put the calculator, there is a little button that says BGN, you press that button and you go into begin mode and then you enter your values. The values are almost exactly the same, but you notice the present value is different. So that is the um, annuity due. Um, future value of annuity due switch from end to begin mode, okay, so you have to, now we're looking at the future value and we must be in begin mode, you punch all the numbers in and you end up with a different value than the previous time. So uh, Excel does the same kind of things, uh, present value of uneven un cash flows. You just take one at a time and you bring them back to present value and then you add them up and you get the present value of the total uh, sum. Um, it goes through again with the HP and the BA2, uh, which is your TA, and it'll help you. Now, you can see here you're looking at uneven cash flows. Um, uh, and this one has a payment associated with it, and you can see the minus 50. 
and you enter these things and here you will put in the net NPV, you will hit the net NPV button to get the net present value. So Excel formula in sales, you can do it like this where 536.9 is your payment, everything else is output. You do that and um, you'll get the uh, net, present, net present value. Now, um, let me just go back a little bit here. Um, nominal rate. So um, when you go to the bank, you know, uh, they give you a number which is the nominal rate. Uh, it's called the nominal rate, but nobody ever says that. Um, nominal rate stated in contracts given by banks and so on. 8% quarterly um, daily interest and so on. But what is this and why are we interested in this? Well, um, there is another um, rate. The periodic rate is the nominal rate divided by M, where M is a number of compounding periods. This is an important thing, particularly when you're computing that present value um, or you're looking at bonds and you know, if, if the 8% is quarterly, 8% um, is annual, but you're getting paid quarterly, the quarterly rate would be uh, as an estimate. It's not exact. There is a formula to do this. But generally, you take the annual and divide by the number of periods, and you get an average of what the uh, periodic rate would be. Then you would enter that periodic rate into your calculator, or else the number will become I will be wrong. Um, compounding formula, this is what it looks like. Now, uh, the nominal rate, um, semi-annual compounding at 12%, so you have to divide by two and it gets you 6%, which is what you see here. Um, so they go through all of these things and they you can, work them out, play with the calculator and work it out. And here it talks about the effective annual rate because when you're doing compounding and it, they tell you a nominal rate, but nominal rate is just a starting point for you to figure out uh, what your um, effective annual rate is. And generally they don't tell you this, you have to figure it out. Uh, but this is based on the uh, compounding uh, period. So you, if you look, you can work it out here. We'll teach you how to do it. And uh, it's based on the number of periods. So invest a dollar for more than effective annual rate, present future value, uh, this nominal rate divided and raised to that. So the future value of 1.06 is 1.1. The effective annual rate is 12.36% because one dollar invested one year at 12 percent semi-annual will grow at the same value as one dollar invested for this amount of money in one year so if it's if it's quarterly it's going to show up um more you see and if it's daily it's going to be humongous <clears throat> so here's to that uh you can use the calculator to find out and you see the annual effective, the annual rate is 12%. You're doing quarterly, it's 12.55. You're doing monthly, it's 12.68. You're doing daily, the effective annual rate is 12.75. So it changes depending upon the compounding period. Um, so you can figure out well, what the bank tells you is generally what is quoted and the government allows them to do that. Um, all right, what else? It's important that you understand effective annual rate, nominal rate, and real. Real rate is where they take the, um, the value of inflation out from nominal rate, and so you have the real rate. Um, amortization schedule, important to capital budgeting, construct the amortization schedule. Now, this is important. You can find the payment. First thing you have to do is find the payment. So you got a loan for $1,000 over this uh, three-year period at 
uh, future value zero, what's going to be my payment? You just punch that in and you can pay. But now the whole thing becomes a little bit different because now you have to figure out, but this is your interest payment. So given those two things, you can come up with your, um, your principal payment. So the payment minus the interest rate will give you the um, principal payment. And from that, you work out a balance. You work out the principal balance, and you use this in the next period to compute. The payment is going to be the same, but to compute your interest and your principal payment. And you do this until, if it's three years, you do it for three years, and you come up and the value will be zero at the end of that time. This is a very small amortization table. But if you're buying a home or something like that, it'll be about 30 years, so you'll have that. Or if you're doing a capital budgeting project for Home Depot and you have to do the amortization table for a loan, it might be 10 or 15 years, something like that. So you can see how they do it. Beginning balance, payment, interest, principal payment, ending balance of the principal 698. Then you start with that, you do the payment again, interest is going to be different. Interest is going to be charged based on the percentage and this. Now it's 70, principal is 332. So you have the principal then the ending balance, boom, payment 402, interest payment 37, 366. You see that's the payoff and you're done. You've paid your $1,000. So it's a very short amortization table. Um, so you can read this a little bit and see what they say. Um, for this one here, fractional periods and so on, you can take a look at it. It's not too bad because it's finding either a payoff or a future value or something like that where it is not fully a year, it's a part of a year. So you normally can do this using some kind of a ratio. Here we're talking about calculator solution, N is 273. Um, okay. Non-matching rates, what's the value at the end of year three of a stream of cash flow? Well, if you follow them, they're not too bad. Timeline for non-matching rates for the period. Um, if you follow the thing, if you go through and you compute right, you know, carefully, uh, one at a time, you will come up with the right answer. And if you have any problems with any of these, then, you know, you can send me a message and, and I can go through. Find the effective annual rate. You can see we do this using the calculator. What's the present value of this stream and so on. Why is that important? Because when you're doing a project and you get cash flow, you have to find the present value of the cash flow or the net present value to figure out whether or not you're going to take this um, project. Okay. Um, and they go through and they give you uh, some other problems here that's not too um, important, but you can figure it out. Calculator solution. If Note if you have the interest on a daily basis and you want to figure out the year, then you've got to multiply or you got to do it like this. This is the real formula, which is the, um, you know, the daily rate, one plus the daily rate raised to the power of 365 minus one. And you're going to come up with this answer, which is 13.89. So uh, that's how you do it. Um, okay, some more rate of return to find out what your rate of return really is, um, depending upon how you're computing, how you're compounding. And you have an answer here like this, 456. Um, and you go through and you do the whole thing and you get the answer. You can do it by hand or you can do it by a calculator. Okay. 
if you come up with these answers and you're doing semi-annual, the annual is you have to multiply by two, just like you did before where you were dividing. So um, take some time to go through this because there's very, very, a whole set of very important concepts here. I'm going to leave you with this, and this is what you generally have to do for, for uh, the submission. Um, uh, I guess it's tonight or, or module two. All right, we're going to stop here, and I'll see you in the next session.